Hello and welcome to So What You're Saying Is. I'm Peter Whittle. And my guest this week, I'm very pleased to say, is Lawrence Fox, the leader and indeed founder of the Reclaim Party. Lawrence has been on the show. I think this is his fourth or fifth uh, visit. Very good to catch up with him again. And there's a particular reason uh, this time. Um, Lawrence, thanks for coming. Um, you have just launched something called the Bad Law Project. Before you tell us about it, can you just sort of say, is this a Reclaim Party initiative? Is it totally for Reclaim? Um, no, is the answer, but it's supported and surrounded by Reclaim. It's um, fundamentally apolitical. So uh, we are working with people from the Greens to Lib Dems to Labour to Conservatives over where good law goes bad. I, as you know from spending time with me, I'm not particularly political, I'm cultural. Those are the things that bother me. So, um, yeah, no, it, 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 it's not, I mean, there's an affiliation with the Reclaim Party, but it's also a separate thing. Yeah. It, it doesn't, you don't need to be uh, a centre right, centre left, left or, or right to have a problem with what's happening in terms of free speech and the demolition of our national institutions, do you? You can be of any political persuasion with that. So, bad law, so how will this work actually? What, I mean, what it, what is your target? What is your aim with this campaign? So it's a cradle to grave campaign. So we look to see where our institutions have become deeply politicised in terms of education, the health service, the police force, the church. And um, we aim to remove politics. So it's almost an anti-political project in a way because we're, we're stuck here talking about politics all the time. It's destroying our relationships with each other. And we want politics out of things. We want politics out of the police, for example, because where the police go, the public will follow. Yeah, yeah. Um, can you give us a sort of example of a bad law? A bad law is a child at school misgendering or being biologically correct if you're you actually apply common sense and reason and everything we've been relying on for the last few hundred years uh, to another child uh, being suspended from that school uh, and come back and being bullied and being forced for, for, for saying for pointing out that a, a boy in a dress is a girl yeah. that's a bad law that's bad use of law and um, so that would be one example. Another example would be uh, the politicisation of the police force in terms of pride. Yeah. You know, the, as I think Harry Miller wrote this weekend, our chairman, about the Orange Marches up north and um, the fact that the police will not be allowed to walk in step with the Orange Marches. And yet at Pride, the police and Leicestershire police have been tweeting about this all the time. Yeah. The, the, the Pride is a, is a fundamentally political movement. Mm -hmm. And our police force should police without fear or favour. So they're just two examples of, of bad law. There's many others. There's the Equal Treatment Bench Book in terms of uh, libel law and what, and what the Equal Treatment Bench Book's definition of what racism is, which essentially is that everyone with white skin is a racist mm -hmm. and that it's impossible for someone who doesn't have white skin to be a racist. Mm -hmm. uh, Law is, is great. It's, it's slow, which is what's so wonderful. And it holds our society and our culture together. But when it's used badly, it's, it, dis, it destroys people's lives. And I think, you know, we're a, a little party, given the option of spending, you know, what, what, what is a by-election campaign? It's vastly expensive, oh, yeah. you know, to get a small vote share because people don't quite know who you are. And in times of trouble, they do tend to hang on to the two main parties or the Lib Dems. I think it's a better use of our money yes. to, uh, to try and have to, to ask for clarification from the judiciary, the highest part of the judiciary, and if their clarification isn't acceptable to the reasonable human being, then we will challenge it. So essentially, you are you. It's a kind of as opposed to kind of an electoral approach. You're you're actually. It's almost like an administrative approach, isn't it? You're going via the legal system. In other words. Uh, tell me if I'm wrong, but Harry Miller, you mentioned there, <clears throat> um, he's trying to make sure that police forces enforce the new rules about hate crimes or the fact that there can't be such a thing as a non-crime, a non-crime hate crime. Non-crime hate incident. Incident. I mean, where did yeah, that come yeah. from? 
So yeah. that's what it is, is it? It's sort of doing that. Yeah, well, we did sit. We have sat and, and worked out. We thought, look, we want to change things. That's what we're interested in. Mm. We, we want to give Britain its institutions back because without our institutions, what are we? Mm. We're nothing. And they've been totally corrupted. So we sat, we, we stood someone in North Shropshire, admittedly not on our, it, w it was never going to be a great success for us, but we d stood someone there and we will stand electorally in the general election. But in the meantime, I don't see the point in asking people for money mm. to, so I can stand 600 candidates that are going to get 2% of the vote. I just don't see that as a useful expenditure of their money. But if somebody does have a problem with their children being taught in the school, that uh, gender identity and biological sex, are, your gender identity doesn't necessarily correspond with your biological sex. So you're teaching my own son this at 10 years old. And if you've got a problem with that, and you, we're going to launch a legal case in regards to that, in regards to returning some fairness to many, I mean, many students who have gone through this stuff, then if you're asking someone for a five pounds or 10 pounds yeah. to help fight that legal fight, it seems to me better than saying, could you just get amorphously give us 25 quid yes. and we'll go and stand. And I think in terms of the, pe people gave their 25 pounds to the Brexit party. That's what they did. And people that couldn't afford it gave their £25 to the Brexit Party. And the Brexit Party folded at the last minute. Mm. And we're now left with this muddy Brexit that people are still complaining about years on. But I think there are other ways of holding the levers of power. Yes. And also helping people from all walks, as I said initially, non-politically, apolitically, um, helping people from, from all walks of life challenge the system. So do you... It, would it... Uh... I'm sorry to sort of labour the point. It's just it's kind of important for people to know how they can help. So, for example, uh, Toby Young in the Free Speech Union, they take up free speech cases, whatever, a bit like a union. So if someone has got a problem, you mentioned your own son there. Mm. What, uh, I've got something which is, you know, really quite personal in my family. You know, uh, my niece, uh, her, you know, kids are... Being asked to, or being told to go to, to diversity classes, things like this, very young, you know, mm. and it's one of those questions where if you don't go along with it, you're kind of branded. There's something wrong with you, you know. Basically, you're a racist or something like that. It, it, it's outrageous. Would you be taking individual cases up then? Yes. So Honestly. where the Free Speech Union defend, we attack. Okay. I think is the is the separation of that, and absolutely something over children being forced into diversity, equity, and inclusion classes, which was part of actually the subject access request I put for my own son. I obviously wouldn't fight the issue over my own son because. Um, what happened there, Lawrence, with your son? Well, I I went in and had a meeting, and I spoke in legal language, and it put the fear of God up them. Because I didn't just go in. And then I gathered some parents, and this is bearing in mind that my son goes to one of the most liberal schools in the world. And I said, do you, what do you guys feel about this? And the parents were upset. We have a problem with PHSE, which I, I, I keep forgetting what it's called, personal health, social, whatever it is. It's a class that's taught to children. And um, it's appalling what they're teaching children. They're teaching children the concept of white privilege. Mm. They're teaching them about the fact that uh, biological, you, you may not have, be the gender that you were you were biologically typically assigned. biologically assigned according yeah, to some. Yeah. so you go through a lot of the there's a lot of websites that farm out these um, teaching resources and parents just don't know yeah. what their kids mm -hmm. are being taught mm -hmm. so it, so where the free speech union would defend someone's right to say you're a boy we will attack the law that allow that made that happen yes do you know what I mean? So I think it's more, yes. it, 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 I think they're sort of, they, they cohabit really. Yes. Um, and you know, we're, you know what I'm like, I'm pretty bullish. So it sort of suits our temperament. So, uh, yes, exactly. Because these aren't issues of free speech exactly, are they? They're, they're for, more fundamental. It's like you're not trying to get free speech up. It's not a matter of that. It's as if your child is being taught something and you disapprove of it or think it's a problem. That's where you come in. Yeah. Well, it works, worked very, very well in America. Now, the other thing about it, which is really important, is it's uncancellable. So we've spent time uh, creating a framework so that this can never, ever be cancelled. So you saw what happened with Alison Bailey mm -hmm. and Crowd Justice removing her funding. We've seen what happened with the uh, Canadian truckers. 
and we're seeing what are happening across the West for anyone who expresses even the vaguest hint mm. of social conservatism, mm. a shutdown and silence. So we've created an uncancellable platform. So mm. if you choose to support that case, that money goes only to that case. And then if we win on that case, so say we take a case out against a school for um, the, what they're teaching children, or we take a case out against the police force, then that money, any winnings, from that remains and is spent again on another police case. Mm. So what it is, is it's growing a movement, yeah. but it's making sure that people feel that it should they wish to donate over something, Calvin Robinson, for example, and the, the disgusting uh, treatment he's received at the hands of the systemically racist Church of England, um, you would know that should you choose to back Calvin, that the next case would be another church case. So we will want to grow it. And you know already we're bombarded I mean, utterly bombarded. I've never had an inbox so full. Yeah. You know, people are always saying to me, how can we help? How can we help? How can we help? Mm. And I'm always like, well, we'll, we'll try and stand. Mm. But ultimately, with the banks doing what they've done to us, which is completely... What have... Uh, so people won't know, actually. Yeah, so we... So we uh, and it's happened to other small parties, too. That we're having our bank accounts removed without any reasons, having not broken any terms and conditions. Now, who knows where that... Uh, edict is coming from and the banks are private businesses they're totally entitled to say you know you're just too risky for us but if you're fulfilling all their terms and conditions and they're removing your bank accounts then something's in the water so we are just key what what we want to do is make sure that anybody has a chance to to go there's a lever of power i don't need to be chancellor of the exchequer yes. to do it i as a one person look at what harry achieved mm. You know, he changed the law. The non-crime hate incidents have been ruled unlawful. Mm -hmm. But last week, in a school in uh, Leicestershire, saw, they're yeah. teaching this stuff yeah, still. Yeah, yeah. They are, the arrogance of the police forces and the arrogance of these um, diversity, equity, inclusion officers to think that they can still talk about things which are unlawful to 10-year-olds. Does that mean, I mean, from what I can remember, uh, that stuff is in is what, the College of Policing guidelines, isn't yes. it? Is that all that stuff? So essentially, that's what you'll be going after. I mean, that if that judgment's been made, then the College of Policing has no business in in still having that in their guidelines. Hmm. Or are you, or is it the fact that these police forces are just going ahead anyway? Well, we're, I'm. I've written to Pretty Patel already. Well, Bad Law has. And we'll write to her again to say that she has to release the information to every one of the more now than 200,000 mm. people who have these Orwellian non-crime hate incidents. Mm -hmm. Ridiculous that we've mm. reached this point. To inform them that, A, they had one in the first place, which would appear on an enhanced DBS check, and B, that it's been removed. Yeah. And, you know, so the, this, that's public service, isn't it? You know, the, people will have these things without knowing them. And the College of Policing, we have this problem, don't we, with guidance and law, yep. where guidance starts to lean into law mm -hmm. and people are confused. So they tend to go, well, the guidance tells me to do that. Whereas we, we're turning around saying, well, the law tells you you must do this. The law is a shield that protects us all equally. And it's being used as a sword by a very vocal and angry minority to attack mm -hmm. all of the things that we hold dear and cherish, you know, in this country. And I think it's important. I mean, do you think, uh, we, we first spoke on this program, um, oh God, I think it was uh, when you just been on question time. Actually, it was before you were on question Well, I had pre-cancellation. Pre-cancellation. <laughs> I mean, this obviously is ancient history for you now, but uh, do you think, would you say that since then, uh, right up to now, that you have felt that the problem we face is far deeper than you could ever have imagined? I mean, oh. that's what many of us, at least including me, feel. Yeah, because <laughs> we've, we've and, I, and I love us for this, but, and I think that it's so wonderful that the Brits are like this. We think the, the establishment around us and the systems that support it and us are there for our well-being. Mm. They're not. Mm. 
They're not. They've been, every single one of them, pretty much, and we're about to find out with the judiciary and the bad law project, which haven't been infiltrated. But you've got every single institution that I've come across has been infiltrated. Mm -hmm. And the desire to hold on to power, certainly in regards to, I mean, you know, just look at the ridiculousness of the church's position with Calvin mm -hmm. to turn around and say we're institutionally racist. Um, to a white woman saying that to a black man. That was the uh, Bishop of London, wasn't it, Sarah? Ma I call her Mrs. Mullally. I can't, I can't quite get to Sarah or Dame. Right. She's Mrs. to me. Right. She's, a no, she's an anti-Christian non-believer, like the rest of the Church of England, like the 25 bishops and their Rwandan national shame mm, plan. Mm, mm, mm. I mean, what's their view, for example, what's the bishop's view on uh, help, uh, stopping people trafficking across yeah, the yeah. Uh, across the channel, but these woke virtue signaling anti Christians are stopping a man who wants to serve God and who is mm. an impeccable record, they're, and they're also spending their time smearing him at the moment. But uh, aren't they de aren't they destroying themselves? Shouldn't you just let them get on with it? Do you, do you know what I mean? I mean, mm. they they appear to be. I think that people. I used to live in. A, little village in the country and the two places where people went were church and the pub mm. and not necessarily because they were Christians but because they got together and it was one of the gathering places mm. so I think people should should want to you know if they want to go to places of worship they should be able to go to places of worship and know that they're going to be taught scripture mm. not be preached at about climate change or uh, British ex uh, deporting policies. Yeah, it, it, yes, we can let them rot and fester, but they are our treasured institutions and we want them. All it takes is for a Christian to be in charge of the Church of England or to be the Archbishop of Canterbury and you're back on track. But, um, you know, because uh, we talk quite a lot, haven't we, about starting one's own, your own institutions and, and taking mm. these things on. Uh, Calvin has kind of gone, hasn't he, to another, um, what do you, would you call it denomination? I don't know. But, Dafcon, yeah. Yes. But, um, I mean, what would you do something? I mean, you're a man of personal faith, aren't you? I mean, would you, have you presumably given up on the, obviously you've given up on Church of England. What would you do there? I mean, would you become totally, uh, would it be a personal thing for you entirely now? Or would you go to a new church? Well, I think there's a bit in the Bible, isn't it, that says when you gather in my name, gather in twos and threes or something like that. Yes, you know, yeah, so yeah. I think most of my Sunday dinners with my mates are, like that, Form of, mm, you know, so mm. I think it's about gathering and talking and discussing and being serious about yeah. the things that one can be serious about. Yeah. I just think it's such a shame that this great and wonderful mm. institution has, has fallen and we're mm. all watching it and you, mm. you're watching it everywhere. You're watching it with sport, the health service, the legal profession education. You're just like, where are these kids going to get a chance from cradle to grave? They're being, they're being stopped. Mm. Obviously, you have also this whole idea that people say, which is teach children how to think, not what to think. You can't teach a child how to think unless you give them a, a foundation to think from, mm -hmm. which are our Judeo-Christian uh, values and are our Enlightenment values, mm -hmm. you know, that have been developed over all of these years. So you can't just go think what you want to think. Otherwise, a child may go, well, I'm a non-binary transgender furry. Yeah, 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 so yeah. we need the institutions. They're important. They protect us from those that wish us ill. And, and you know, I want I want I want sensible people in charge of them, not ideologues. Yes. How one gets that is the big question, is it? I mean, mm. we filmed in Hungary quite recently, did a program in Hungary. And uh, they are going about trying to create a future small c conservative elite mm. in order to, you know, fill institutions. Of course, the left see this is terribly, terribly kind of sinister. But in fact, what it is is just simply a challenge to something that they've been had, in, you know, been in charge of for years. Um, how has your life? How, what is your everyday life like? I mean, <laughs> since you've been doing the reclaim, which is how long actually has the party now been in? It's two years? It must be nearly 18 months, I'd say. Um, Do you still get the whole door stepping thing? Do you get all of that no. kind of grief? I've, um, people know now that bullying doesn't work. So they've stopped with the bullying. I mean, I don't really read any social media comments, so I don't know about that. I, every time I walk out into the street, I'm pretty much every day greeted fondly by yeah. people. I've very rarely come across 
uh, any antagonism, which is nice, um, get, as opposed to what you get online. My day involves managing these sorts of things. I mean, as yeah. I came in to see you today, I'm going through pre-action letters towards various things. And um, <clears throat> so because we have- Because you have actually got various legal things going on as well um, at the moment. Yes, yeah. I've, got, I've got, we've got a heap of legal cases going on. So we're, we're, going, we're running a th sort of three-pronged strategy. Yes, there is an electoral element, which will be very small and very focused and will be aimed at destabilizing a certain incumbent in mm -hmm. certain areas and, mm -hmm. or, you know, at least helping to swing the vote the other way. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, we'd love it if we got elected. I think that would be fab, but it's now and impossible. Will you stand at the forthcoming by-election, say, uh, we will reclaim stand? We're not going to stand in Wakefield yeah. and we're not going to stand in Honiton. We're going to wait for the general elections. We have stood in by-elections. I mean, I, I, you know, I'm a big fan of all of the small parties, so I would be really pleased if Reform and SDP did really well, but I just can't see it. Mm -hmm. So I, for me, I have to think about my responsibility to the people who back me and what I use the money best for. Mm -hmm. So we will have a three-pronged strategy, which is we have a little media channel now. We nick mm -hmm. that off you. Thank you. <laughs> and um, we have, uh, so we do interviews with people from, again, across the political spectrum, and we, we make doc documentaries, we're making a documentary about P PHSE this uh, in the next few weeks so that parents can see come the end of term. PHSE. Well, yeah, I can't remember, what I keep forgetting what it stands yeah, for, yeah. but it, it's typical lefty stuff. Yes, you wouldn't know yeah, what it stood yeah. for. But um, essentially, it's, it's the period in a week where they indoctrinate your kids about whatever. Okay. Um, so we're making stuff about that. We have an electoral strategy, which is uh, limited to a small number of seats where we can throw our resources. And then we have this legal strategy, mm. which we hope to um, show people is, is, is not dependent on, on party political affiliation. Yeah. So my day basically starts at about 6.30 with 400 emails. Um, which I deal with by about nine, and then I'm in the office, and we're usually recording an interview or um, planning what we're doing that week. And then in the afternoon, I go and get the kids from school, <laughs> and then I get home and have a large gin, rinse, wash, repeat. Yeah. Do you, so, the, not having the uh, the the uh, or, or the, having an electoral strand in the party, just an electoral strand. This endless, you must hear it all the time, this endless question, why don't all the parties get together? You know, why don't the smaller parties get together? I mean, do you think that that is just simply not going to happen? I don't. And um, I can totally see why. And I also love it that it doesn't happen because we're the entrepreneurial side, right? Yes. We're, we're like, I can do this by myself. Otherwise, yeah. you and I would join forces and have the <laughs> Peter Whittle Lawrence Fox culture forum. But <laughs> you don't. Yeah. You go, I'm going to have my own culture forum where I talk about what I want to talk about. Yeah. And I go, mm -hmm. the more, the merrier. So I love it. What I do think we can do to help each other out is come the election, is go, look, we've got a really good guy here to the other parties. Yes. We'll stand here, you support us, and where you want to stand with a great candidate, we'll support you. But there's, there's an awful lot of egos flying mm. around this, mm. um, this side of the argument, and, and what can one do? Yes, because I, you know, the, I think that the, the way, I think you've, more, you've, more or less, you've said this already, but it is actually to put pressure either on individuals or you know, in a way, a little bit like maybe UKIP or the Brexit Party did. OK, they were electoral forces, but they were kind of pressure groups to start with. Mm. Um, and I think this is this is absolutely crucial. Also, to give people a sense in which they're not alone. Do you not feel that? A lot of people feel that yeah. they are alone amongst this stuff. Well, none of the above just won the, who's the who would make the best next prime minister, didn't yeah, they, yeah. In, in a poll. Yeah. So um, I think what what is interesting is that Brexit was a cultural movement it yeah. was whether yeah. you like it no, or not no, it was. people call it political but it wasn't mm. it was it was something someone felt it was like i want my sovereignty back i want mm. uh, britain to be able to make its own choices mm. about things ukip was the same it was a cultural movement and what i want to do is cultural i'm not interested in politics mm. so when we have these the other parties who come out with lots of policies i'm just like okay great mm. brilliant my policy would be let's be energy self-sufficient and let's not teach our children this stuff. You know, my, my policy, I could like write, write down on a, on a fag packet. But um, 
ultimately, it's as you say, it's putting pressure where pressure is needed. Mm -hmm. You know, you've seen. I think we'll hopefully be seeing the last of the England football kneeling. I was about to ask you about that. You're still, you know, you pretty much, you know, you're you're pretty on fire on uh, Twitter and everything, and you you you've been giving it to them this week. I have a, sort of a very hazy idea of what ha what's going on, but apparently they, the English football team lost really appallingly, didn't it? Towards, uh, against Hungary, but After they still. Losing to them a couple of weeks what do you think with Gareth Southgate saying we need to educate people or something like that? What Isn't that? it so odd this yes, idea yes. that inclusion? To include someone involves educating them. Yes. Isn't that such a such a passive aggressive, oh, yes. completely oppositional way of having a decent free expression, yes. free conversation? The England football team, I call me old fashioned, and I think I am old fashioned. My um, teacher in my first school, Trevor Wharton, stabbed a German soldier in the neck with a commando knife. He was a commando, and he he handed this knife round in school. So <laughs> he was really thrilled with it. But call me old-fashioned. I think that we have three lions on our shirt as for, uh, as the country, and that and that is Richard the Lionheart. Mm. We should be lion-hearted. Lion-hearted men in this war on men that we're witnessing, and women, weirdly, at the moment, should not be on their knees before their adversaries. Mm. And if you want to win a football match, I'd rather they did the hucker, yeah, to yeah, be honest, yeah. and get rid of this rainbow armbands. Yeah. You know, there was a whole hoo-ha with the with the poppy from yeah. Remembrance Sunday, and the, the, these rainbow armbands and these virtue signaling things months before they're about to head off to Qatar, mm. where being homosexual is illegal, mm. and you can get thrown off a roof. I was going to say it's that, that's the that's the least of it. Actually, yeah. yeah, and yeah. that the stadiums are built by slave labour, and and they they would be kneeling. I, I mean, if I was hungry, I'd be going, get in, lads, let's go and really see what they're doing. And as they did, England lost. Gareth Southgate is a, is a, is an is an embarrassment to this country. You see, I can. Uh, I'll probably get it in the neck for this, but I can almost by looking at his face, I can see it. There's something about you know that kind of high moral sort of. I don't know. He looks to me like a kind of woke teacher. Yeah, he's a woke teacher without principles. Yes, you've got to. Someone's got to tell you what the principles are. Yes, and if you know what the principles are, you'll be fine. And the principles are: we're all equal. This is an amazing country, and we're all trying to make it even better than it already is. Yeah. But by any metric, you measure Britain, and it is one of the most tolerant, warm, and respectful countries on earth. Mm. And for some reason, there is a, there, there are parts of the media, and there are parts of again, what well, take us back to our institutions, who teach our children from the minute they walk mm. into the school mm. door mm. what a disgusting and vile place this country is. Mm. And I, for one, and uh, you know those that support me and follow me and come up to me in the street and say thank you, are, are fed up of it. Yeah, yeah. We're a wonderful country, mm. and, and we're a tolerant country. You know, if you want to go and see intolerance, there are plenty of countries you can go to. You saw people at pride marches with mm. um, Ukraine flags. Go yes. and check the homosexuality laws in Ukraine. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Also, you know, these are the very people who complained about flag shaggers and things. I mean, they're, they're, it's all about flags. Now, going down around Westminster, um, I think it's the Royal Institute of, uh, not architects, but engineers. That's right, very near here. Huge flag. Not just the rainbow flag, but the new bit with the brown bit in it. Oh, and I don't the, like that one. Exactly. It's the, the latest. It's, it's ugly, uh, you know, but so much for not liking flags. Um, do you think, I know that you're not a huge Monica, sort of, but we've just had the Jubilee. Um, what I took from that was the, you know, I was very comforted by it, was the number of people all over the country who put up the Union Jack, you know, whether it's in Bunting or wherever it is, all over, wherever you looked. And I just thought, well, it, this message of hating Britain and the flag is obviously not even, it's just not cutting any ice with them. They're not even really thinking about it. That's something to be, you know, whether whatever you think about the Jubilee, that is actually something to be comforted by, is it not? Well, it's brilliant because it goes to show that the people aren't really buying this whole, you're, yes, all, exactly. you're, you're all racist trip. Yes. Because the minute you have a flag, that it encompasses a union, anybody can be part of that yeah, union. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter whether you're gay, straight, black, white, whatever yeah. the sort of personal piece of um, identity that you want to take for yourself, yeah. you unite under that flag. So yeah. it gets rid of things like yeah. racism and homophobia and, um, you know, it, 
the problem is that's just a distraction from what we do have, which is a class problem. Yeah. But it's not that I'm not a monarchist, it's just that I'm looking at Prince Charles and I'm going, oh Lord, how long mm. am I going to have to sit through your kingship, mm. Captain Wokathon? Mm. You know, your royal wokeness. It's, it, well, you know, mm. it's awful, Rwanda, the climate's yes, awful. Yes, and it's, yeah. it's, you know, mm. I've been told that the climate's going to destroy us from this high. I think yeah. actually in, in, in the case of Charles, uh, wasn't it? I think we've, he's actually already gone over his time, hasn't he? He gave us a certain amount of time Did we he? had left. Oh, yes. Um, it was either in months or, or days or whatever. A, a good 10 years ago. I think we've passed. So we're on to William. Yes, I think we've passed that now. I mean, we've gone, we should have gone. William it, seems all right, doesn't he? Well, he does. Um, yes. He's, a, he's I mean, still a bit. Uh, yes. I, I, he's, he's sort of a little bit woke. Um, I think the best thing that could possibly happen is if Charles just went in there for five years or something, and then just, you know, elegantly dignified, just sort of said, "I'm, I'm leaving in favour of my." If, if for nothing else, uh, simply because of age. I mean, he's already forty, William. But, uh, mm. I mean, speaking of the future in that way, um, do you feel all the stuff that you're doing with Reclaim, and that we're all doing in our different ways? Do you feel? Uh, more optimistic now than maybe a couple of years ago or now that the pandemic and all of that is sort of fading a bit because uh, I have to say we have various conversations during that period where it everything seemed entirely lost I have to say you, you have to own it I, I remember thinking oh I just don't even want to think about the future it's never going to be the same um are you optimistic more optimistic, or are you more concerned now well, I've got this terrible faith, you see. Mm. So I always believe that the the right comes out in the yeah. end and, and the cream will rise to the top and good will triumph over evil. I certainly think that this step over into gender ideology, uh, into the abolishment of women, mm. is is a huge step too far yeah. from the other side. So I think that's a, uh, a victory that can be had for, mm. for common sense and, and it can be an example of men because, you know, ultimately the war began on men, didn't it? With, yeah, with yeah. Me Too and, the, and you know, well, it goes all the way back in, through culture to say that you don't need to have a solid family, you don't need this sort of stuff. But I think this war on men, which has now morphed into a war on women yeah. as well, I think is just, it's too, too many steps too far. So as you said, you know, why don't you just leave the Church of England to, to fall apart? I go, no, let's fight for it mm, to mm, come back together. Mm. And I think the Jubilee, I don't think it had as much impact as uh, the Diamond, which she was Platinum Diamond, which mm. was incredibly huge. And we were very optimistic for some reason those years ago. But I think that people are awake. They're understanding that their country and, their, and its values are absolutely under attack. Mm. And that's not white British people. No. That's British people yeah, yeah, yeah. who 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 love the the equality under the law, our um, the way that we are, uh, you know, our language, our heritage, our culture. People that love that. It doesn't matter whether you have you're particularly sort of a white skinned person. I think that still holds very very true, and um, hence why you get these very small minorities of people that are, aren't supported. You know, the, the, those protesting outside Batley School who achieved what they wanted to achieve, which was sending this man into hiding with their, with their mob mentality. It's not, the, it's not the move of someone who's confident and strong with their cultural impact on a society yeah. who decides to shut everything down and close it down. And I think we're fed up and I think we're going to fight back. Well, it's interesting. I, I did a, a brief monologue last week about the um, protests about this film you know, the Lady of Heaven, and the strength of feeling that came back on, on that, I was just, just talking about, you know, we cannot simply allow censorship like this, uh, whatever, uh, was extraordinary. And basically it's because it's not really being talked about in the mainstream, I think, isn't that right? The mainstream media are, are you know, callous. Although you did make a return visit quite recently, didn't you? I did. Mainstream? <laughs> I went on BBC. <laughs> I went, and I'm sure they were like, Ooh. I was greeted by a man in a skirt. Oh, really? When I arrived, yeah. Oh, so I thought, really? you and I are going to get on. I actually think, go for it. Wear a skirt. It doesn't bother me at all. Yeah. And also, call yourself Jenny. 
Couldn't care less. Just don't tell me that I have to yes. assume that you're a... But it wasn't even know. a Jean-Paul Gaultier type skirt. It was sort of like a real... Just a bad skirt. D Dick Emmerich. It was just a bad <laughs> skirt. Um, yes, where I, I sat there and the, the, the Labour Baroness sat there telling me... Um, she went, there is no such thing as a culture war. There is no culture war in England. And then I said, well, so did the statue hop off its own plinth down yeah, in yeah. Bristol, at the Colson statue, and stroll the mile down the road before throwing itself into the harbour, did it? And then she went, well, you're making it worse. Uh -huh. And I said, well, hang on a minute. Either there's no culture war and there's nothing to worry about, or there is a culture war, and you lot, your side of this discussion, should engage with it and say, we don't. We don't appreciate um, statues being torn from their plinths. Let's have a conversation, the two sides, those of us that do want to protect our cultural heritage and those of us that want to obliterate yeah. it. Let's agree on a plinth, you know? So, look, Lord, how can people get involved? How, with, your, with the Bad Law Project, where should they go if they want to find out about it? What's the website? So the website is badlawproject.com. Uh, or badlaw.com. I think it's badlawproject.com. Badlawproject.com. And um, what will happen is you, you'll see the uh, beginning of these cases that we're starting to put together. Um, we haven't put the donate button on yet because I don't want to ask people for m any money right. until we have an absolute case ready and on its way. Right. Because I just, I'm, I'm very nervous of people giving people money anyway. Uh, without knowing what they're getting back for it. Okay. So uh, that you can go to badlawproject.com and then you can go to, um, you, it also has a link through, hyperlink through the Reclaim Party website. Okay, great. Well, that's what you should do then. Um, can you just stay with us? Because we have a few questions for our members for sure. you. Um, just ex exclusive uh, content, I think they call it. Uh, anyway, thank you very much though. In the meantime, Lawrence, um, that's it for this week. Uh, we shall be back next week. We we'll see. So what you're saying is, and we shall see you then. Okay. Thank you. Hello. If you're enjoying the New Culture Forum channel and you believe in our mission, may I invite you to join our membership scheme at the link below or on our website, newcultureforum.org.uk. Our work is more important now than ever, and we have great plans ahead for the future, but we can't do it without your support. From as little as three pounds per month, you can help ensure that we continue on our mission. As a member, you'll receive a range of benefits, including access to exclusive content, invitations to our private events, including here at our studios, free copies of our books, and much, much more, including, of course, our famous NCF mug. If you aren't able to become a member, then please help us by clicking this button and subscribing to our channel. It's completely free. Just remember to also click the bell icon so that you can get notifications when we post new videos. Thank you.